very much. Um, just to give you a bit of background on myself, I studied film and TV just up in Clough to do there. And I got my degree in, in, uh, in Wolverhampton University. Uh, when I finished college, I, I didn't really have a clear path on how to go out and make a career. And, uh, yeah, I kind of, I kind of really have to stupidly resent it having to start at the bottom, you know, after spending four years studying it. Uh, the opportunities to kind of make your own stuff wasn't as feasible then, and, um, and Martin Scorsese didn't just phone me up out of the blue off me a dream job. I, um, I kind of drifted away from it uh, for about 10 years. So uh, work is something you spend you know, pretty much all your time doing, or the majority of your time. And after 10 years after graduating, I kind of realized you know, what I was doing wasn't what I wanted. Um, you know, spending all your time in this thing, caring about something that if you kind of ask yourself, you know, you really don't care about it at all. So, um, about four years ago, I just made a career switch and I started kind of focusing on acting and writing. Um, it's not easy to make a living doing it. Um, and if you're into the arts, it's not going to be easy for you either. Um, but if you're a creative person, you, you believe in yourself, you, you really don't have a choice. You kind of you have to do it. So, if you don't do it right away, it's going to catch up on you eventually, so my advice would be just to get to it now. Um, really happy to be part of this event. I think the girls put on a great job, so thanks for having me at it. Um, my first initial impression of the brief is to kind of talk about what makes the North Side um, you know, a, a great place for aspiring filmmakers or writers. And of course, I don't really know how to answer that, because there are more opportunities out on the south side than there are here. You know, the main studios are out there. Um, there's more money out there, you know, so the sad and simple fact is that just kind of means that, you know, you're more connected and sometimes that's just the edge you need to inch in front of an extremely competitive uh, industry. So what have we got that the South Side doesn't? Uh, we're way cooler than them. <laughs> Everybody knows that, so that, that, that's something. But if you're a writer, that's, that's gold. The, the North Side vernacular, it's so rich and colourful. It's what's used in almost every film set in Dublin. Um, it influences my own life hugely. Um, lots of times I don't even come up with what, what goes into my own stuff. I just listen to people and copy them and rip it off. Um, conversation with my wife or my brother. People say funny stuff all the time. All I do is remember it and write it down. And pretty soon then you have people telling you how realistic your dialogue is. And all I do is yeah, rip it off. It's great. Um, so yeah, I think if you're, if you're into writing, especially humour, I think if you're from the north side, um, you know, chances are you're funny. Uh, and if you're not funny, you're, you're maybe one of the only ones, but at least your mom is funny, or your best friend, or you know, your sister. So just listen to them. Um, watch them, you know. If you want to create real and deep characters, just you know, look around you. Um, the north side, I think, of, this, of the city, I think, is it's a more culturally diverse, and I believe a more creative uh, part of Dublin. We, we have Brendan Gleeson, Colin Farrell, Sean O'Casey, Roddy Doyle, Bram Stoker, George Bernard Shaw, <coughs> the South Side, I'm Yates, in fairness, but he's <laughs> pretty good. Um, but, um, you know, we have Ronnie Drew, we have Lou Kelly. You just, just stand on Hill 16 during a Dublin match and just listen to what the outfits be shouting out like it's, it's beautiful. So um, it's a great place to be from, and not just in Ireland but in the world. So I suppose the question for me is how can we help harness that natural creativity into film? Clash of just up the road is one of the best film schools in Dublin, so that's a great start. Um, you know, obviously investment into studios and stuff would be wonderful, but it's not very likely, it's certainly very difficult. So for me, and my own personal experience, is um, the answer lies with the individual creative person themselves. Uh, if you have an interest in film, or in writing for film, or producing something, you can. You, you can start off small, you just shoot something on your phone, throw it up on YouTube, and see it as a land. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. If it only gets like 50 hits, you'll still learn something from it. Um, or you meet someone during the process and that might lead you to something else, something bigger. So it's a slow process and it's not going to happen overnight, but the more young people that go out and 
start doing that, then the more creative hubs will start to emerge over here and the more connections we can all gain from just individuals going out and expressing their art. So, um, one of the things I've learned since, since getting into this business is there's no such thing as a big break. There's just lots of little breaks that lead to larger successes. Um, and they can come from anywhere, you know. You know um, so put yourself out there, um, take every opportunity, no matter how small it might seem. Uh, about four years ago, I, I took a work for free in this young fella's um, graduation film. Uh, it was a tiny, tiny part. I got killed on page two by slipping on the wet floor, and a cake falls on my face. A spike goes through my eyes, and then I end up dying with my head in a bucket. So it was a pretty kind of abysmal acting debut. But the director of that film, I stayed in touch with, and I worked with him again with a bit of bigger part. And then. Um, he ended up being my producer partner on Lyft, which, um, you know, which became my first feature film. So little I know the line on the ground was stinking and like a smelly, was smelly book on my head leading to my first film. So you don't know where they're going to come from. Um, but yeah, it is difficult and it will take time. So know that for starting out, um, you know, be prepared for that. that you, you know, you're probably going to have to work for free starting out, which sucks, but there's a flip side to that. That if you have an idea and you want to do something tomorrow, you can for very little. You can find actors and uh, cameramen, sound technicians, all willing to give their time if they believe in the project. All you have to do is maybe pay them back on your next one when you get funded or work for them on their projects. So you build your connections and build your reputation. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess just um, to finish up, um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you if, yeah, if you start now, just my advice is just to just to do it. Um, it's, it's, it sounds kind of a simple thing to say, but but that's what it comes down to. Um, I remember. My granddad uh, used to, he was a truck driver, he used to talk about how he loved Mondays and how he couldn't wait to get up for, for work because he loved his job, you know. And I could never understand that, but I understand it now. Um, it's, it's worth it, we, you know, we do for the, for the love of it. And if you love something, chances are you're going to be good at it. And if, if you're good at something, people are going to take notice and you will succeed at it. So, again, for anybody, <coughs> who are just kind of starting out or you know want to get into it, just shoot something. Even just if you do it once, you know, just film something one time. Um, you know, your your family and friends are gonna love it. But if you just get one person who doesn't know you and if he thinks it's great too, then that's affirmation that you're on the right track, so stick with it. Shoot something else and then pretty soon, you know, you're on a, a path to a happier life. Um, spending all of your time doing something you love. Thank you.